Um, I don't know. I don't know how the healthcare system works in other countries. Or I know even in Canada, some of the larger provinces, they have decent health care and they're not complaining. Um, they have problems too, but the smaller populated provinces, it's <laughs> some of the health care is deplorable. So I'm sitting here trying to troubleshoot. Like this is life and death stuff. I'm trying, trying to sh troubleshoot and it's, it's inconceivable that there's no health care provider fighting for my life and trying to troubleshoot all of this with me. And, you know, it just blows my mind. Like the apnea is so severe that it's life threatening and to the point where it, it, it causes, it, it, it it's a risk of, for suicide. Um, I slept less than two hours last night. I, I, it's really hard to be alive. So I'm trying to troubleshoot this. And after, you know, three years ago being diagnosed with severe apnea, it's incredible that no one has had a conversation with me. What if CPAP doesn't work? What's my other options? There's no one to even have a conversation with. There's, there's no doctor who has explained any of this to me or what any of the options are. The games that are being played it is just, it's such a dark industry. The games being played, one of the games being played is not tell a patient what their options are and not tell a patient what their realistic options are, not tell a patient what you know, in a perfect world, this, that, the other thing might be the options. In this world, they won't even tell you what the other options are. They might, they might not, they might not feel like it. It's some kind of weird game. They might not tell you what the options are because the options might not be available here. I don't know what the game is about. And I don't mean just for CPAP uh, options or apnea options. I mean for everything, every kind of healthcare here. You're lucky if your provider might tell you the, the other options. And the thing is, you might not even know that there are other options. And I didn't know. So CPAP is not an option for me. I keep it on hand because if I'm in absolute crisis, like say with the, I get a bad virus or something, I will be, you know, I'm, I'm so at high risk. I have severe apnea to the point where I have apnea where I'm awake. My throat is closing, cutting off my air supply. So I'm trying to think what else could, you know, like, I don't know the mechanics and how to keep those airways open. So this is the thing I was telling you about before. You can buy it from from the drugstore. And oh, I didn't bring the box. Oh, grind. Oh, it's a, called a grind guard dental protector for nighttime grinding of teeth. I don't know if anybody. I mean, you don't need a prescription. You can just buy it. The problem with this is when you're sleeping with something in your mouth, like instantly, it can cause severe uh, dental pain teeth pain, jaw pain. And, you know, within minutes of, of wearing this, I was almost crying, but it was helping to keep my airways open, but the pain was so bad. It's just not doable. And I think with this, this, I don't remember, but the instructions were to boil it in water and then, you know, make, use it on your upper pellet, mold it to your upper teeth. Oh my God, it's so tight. It's so tight. The pain. And immediately you're, you've got a headache and jaw pain and teeth pain. Just unbearable. But you, I think you get one chance of boiling it and redoing it. 
So now I'm rethinking this. I bought this months ago and I couldn't use it because it's too painful. I'm rethinking it. Okay, what if I boil it and do it to the lower jaw? Well, this is pretty much mangled to, I don't even think it's usable. So, But I did it for the lower jaw. And I'm going to try this tonight. See, the thing is, uh, okay, like, or an oral device is an option for severe apnea. I guess I left that out, hey? Oral, an oral appliance is an option for apnea to keep your airways open. I didn't understand why. And now I just looked up, if you look up, if you look that up under images on Google, you'll see how they do these things. I just figured out they, they, you make an appliance to move the bottom jaw forward. So to, you know, to kind of not, you know, not as far as possible, but you move the, the whole concept is to move the lower jaw forward. And I never knew that. I thought it was just to kind of keep the mouth open, but it's to move the jaw forward. So let me tell you something. I guess this is something that doctors wouldn't tell you to watch out for or dentists or whatever. See, even when I was a kid, I, I, 15 years old, I remember just gently sleeping like this all the time with this hand or the other. And I thought that was curious and weird. And I, I didn't know what was going on. But what was going on? Many, many people do this, sleep like this to, to force, you know, to force the jaw to do something it's not doing. When I was younger, I had an underbite, so the jaw was moved forward, and I mouth breathed, and I mouth breathed at night. What I now figured out is this wasn't a bad thing. This was to keep my airways open because I have such a small jaw and lots of teeth I had. I had too many teeth for such a small jaw. And probably smaller airways. And so I would sleep with my mouth open and to keep the airways open. But I never knew that until now. So so let me tell you, when I was 25 years old, I had braces. I didn't know I had this problem that I was mouth breathing to literally keep my airways open. But... I didn't know that, I mean, nature or, you know, nature helps you adapt to what you're, nature will often help you adapt to medical issues you're not even aware of. So you might have a kid that's sleeping with their mouth wide open and you might think that's weird or maybe that's not good for them. Like, and literally nature has adapted this kid to mouth breathe to keep their airways open, but you don't know that. And then a dentist goes and talks you into getting braces for this kid to to move the jaw forward. And literally you're doing a thing, a disservice to the person, you know? So that's what I realized. I had braces when I was 25 years old. And I didn't realize part of getting braces, what for me was moving the jaw forward. They using elastics and very forcibly, you know, moving that jaw forward for, you know, a couple of years, I even after getting the braces, I didn't literally te technically know that my jaw was being moved forward and that might not be a good thing. So that medical intervention likely made things more difficult for me. And the pain, the pain going through all that at 25 instead of a 12 year old and 12 year olds are basically like cartilage. You can, you know, bend their arms and legs and knots. Your, your, your teeth aren't, you know, like bone set in bone when you're a child, you know, so it's significant pain. The pain was unbearable. I was, I was working full time. The pain was bloody and bearable, unbearable. And the sleep issue, you know, the sleep issue was bad. Sleep issues always been bad, but I remember when I was, remember what apartment I was living in, nice, nice big apartment on my own, would walk to work a couple miles every day, and the sleep issue was hell, and, and the pain, 
the jaw pain, the teeth pain, but I bet you I was struggling worse because the jaw was being moved and being misdiagnosed. The more pain I was in, the more distress I was in with MCAS, with undiagnosed MCAS, with sleep issues, with breathing issues. It was all, you know, being misdiagnosed as mental health issues and being talked in. God, I remember the doctor talking me into all sorts of mental disorders and drugs. And it's, it's so, you know, you have a kid, you have children, it's so important to protect your kids, your, you know, young adults. The crap that has happened to me and not having a family, you know, not having anybody educated around, not having anybody knowledgeable enough to fight for me or protect me. The protection is just paramount, right? Someone overseeing what a, a, a doctor is doing to you. Loads and loads of drugs. My God, they had me drugged up, you know. And I was a trooper and I, I, I just fought through it and tried to have the most normal life I could. We worked full time, went out and partied with my friends, blah, blah, blah. I, oh my God, what they did to me. What a, what a, you know, I, I, I equate it with a, a criminal act, you know, it's just so wrong. And this is happening to so many people. And the thing is, people aren't telling people, aren't even telling their good friends what a doctor is doing to them. They're hiding the medications because they're embarrassed because it, it carries such stigma. This is so wrong. This is happening to kids, to adults, to grandparents, you know. I have a friend, you know, she's older than me. I bet you a thousand. She's being drugged for bipolar. I bet you a million dollars she's not bipolar. I bet you it's all complex PTSD and anxiety. She's got no, I don't believe for a second she's bipolar. This is like, uh, is, this is like a criminal act, drugging people for disorders they don't have. And you silence them. You dampen, you dampen their spirit. You dampen their, their ability, their cognitive ability, their ability to be the, all that they can be and be them, their real selves. You're, you're sedating people. You're drugging, you're drugging people out of who they are, you know? And I remember back when I was 25 years old, braces on and being, this shrink was just, I had, I had a good job and I, I had a great insurance plan and my insurance, you know what, in retrospect, my insurance plan will pay for any, any drug, thousands of dollars worth of drug. Doctors would see me come in and they would salivate. This doctor had me just a continual on so many drugs at least four to six milligrams of Ativan a day, Zopaclone, just loads of different medications. How, you know, I'm only sleeping two or three hours a night and I, I can't mentally grasp the full concept of what that even looks like. Like if I'm sleeping seven or eight hours a day, one day, seven or eight hours a night one day and eat, having my full faculties about me looking back at that situation what they did to me I think it will impact me even harder I only see it through the lens I see it through a foggy lens of someone who's slept less than two hours last night you know but it's like you know it's like being raped for decades it's like being sodomized for decades by someone who has far much power and they're cunning and they can hide it all, hide everything that, that has happened to you and slander you and uh, discredit you, you know? Um, God, it's also traumatizing. Um, so I was looking at the photos. I should probably do another video. This, is, this one's getting too long. I'll do a second video.